Hello and welcome to the first tutorial in the FinTracker 2.0 tutorial series. We're going to show you how to create a new individual ID form in the system. So the first thing you need to do is confirm that it is you that is running the app. Uh, we've installed biometric feedback on this, so it can be done either through a fingerprint, facial recognition, or through your username and password. So here I'm going to click confirm. I'll use a fingerprint recognition. And it takes you right to your dashboard, which shows any incomplete or completed FinTrack forms. As you can see on the top, I can toggle between the two um, to see which ones are completed and which ones are incomplete. I have no incomplete forms at this time, and so we're gonna start cre by creating a new form. How you do this is you go to the bottom right-hand corner and you click the plus sign. Now it'll ask you what you wanna create. In our case, it's an individual identification. Now we have the ID form that came up and uh, you start filling in the information. So the first thing I'll do is I'll, it's a re there's record is for a buyer. One of the things we've added in, in uh, version two is the ability to send an email to your client uh, explaining what FinTrack's all about uh, and basically a disclosure form on why compliance is important and why we're collecting their identification for this purpose. So if I were wanting to do that, I could put that in uh, right here. Um, I'm not going to do that, but, but that's where it would go in. And then you just click on send FinTrack disclosure and it would send it to that email address. Another feature we've added in version two is the ability to create a transaction kit. So if I've already created a receipt of funds for this transaction and I want to add this ID to the transaction, I could just click on attach this to existing transaction kit and then it'll give me a drop down list of all the transaction kits that are possibly, uh, that I have in my system. Um, Again, I'm not gonna do this right now, so we'll take that out. Now it's asking for the property address. So we'll just start typing it in and we use an address widget uh, in this field so that it, it should pop up with the address as you're typing. And there it is, Kelvin Boulevard in Winnipeg. Has your, the city, the province, the postal code, everything looks correct, I hit set. It's all in the system now. And now it asks me to verify the individual. So I can either click on the scan photo ID button in the middle of the screen here, or on the bottom right hand side, there's also a scanning button, which I'll click. And this gives you information on how to scan. So if it's a driver's license or a provincial card, you use the barcode on the back of the system. Uh, if it's a passport, you would scan the front of the passport. I'm gonna do it from the camera. So I put the ID there. Now it scanned all the information off the ID, the date that it, it, the information is verified, my legal name, my address, uh, every, all the information that came off of the identification, uh, including the postal code, date of birth, etc. Now the fields that it doesn't come with are the ones that are required by you to fill out at this time. The person's occupation, so I'm just going to write software developer. The employer is forward solutions and the industry is software it was a driver's license it has all the identification of the driver's license and we include not just a driver's license number but also the number on the back of the card uh, you know some 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 people say you should be recording one some people say you record the other so we just record both it also gives the expiry date of the document if this document had been expired already it would not let me use it uh, as authentication for the system so I hit OK. So now that's all filled in in the, in our, in the form here. Now the next uh, section asks about third parties. So we ask, is there a third party? And I say no. So there's no third party. If there was a third party and I say yes, then you'd fill out some third party information as well. The next one is, the, is a client risk. It's a Canadian citizen uh, who's physically present. So we're going to say it's a low risk. And the business relationship. So we gotta say, how, what kind of a business relationship do we have? So the eight, we're, I'm acting as an agent in this, uh, in this time for the purchase or sale of a residential property. And it asked me about my business dealings. I say, well, this is, you know, he has been a client for three years, mostly residential. So now the next thing is to 
say what measures I've taken to monitor business relationship. And I will put in here under other that, you know, we check periodically if anything has changed. Okay, now that we have that done, um, if it's a suspicious transaction, it just gives you some information about what that means. Also, terrorist property reports that you should be checking with your brokerage procedures to make sure that you're not dealing with any terrorists. Uh, and now we go to the politically exposed persons uh, part of the form. And so it asks you, is the person a politically exposed person? Um, are they are they related to a politically exposed person or any of those other things or head of uh, international organization or a family member? Um, in, in this case, it's none of the above. And the date determination was made. It was today. And how do we make the determination? So as long as we've asked the individual if they're a politically exposed person and they've said no, that fulfills your requirement. So that's usually the easiest way to do it. So that's what we're going to do here. I asked the individual and they said no. And now that I've completed all those pieces, I can save the form. Now it should be noted that I could save the form at any time and come back to it later. Now that I've saved the form, I can either edit, edit the record. I can add it to a, add a new record to the same transaction kit. I could submit the record, um, or I could view my records. So in this case, I'm just going to keep it here in my records. I'm having to save to my records. And so now when I go back to my records, it shows under incomplete forms, this individual ID that I just created. So that's all for creating an individual ID. We'll go through submitting the ID in the next tutorial. Thank you.